and disciples. Welcome to Between Master and Disciples on Supreme Master Television. In today's show, Supreme Master Ching Hai shares with association members the following lecture entitled The Matriarchal System in Cape Town, South Africa on November 28, 1999. All the advertisements about Africa, you know, jungle, lions. <laughs>
You see, when you are in such a good air, yeah, good environment with a lot of trees, and the trees uh, generate oxygen as, as usual, then you feel your skin looks better. Look at yourself. The skin looks younger, yeah, smoother. And the pore is, is finer. You see, the skin is more refined. And your wrinkles disappear. Yeah. Hey, uh, yes, I remind you to look at yourself. You feel better here, right? Fresher, no? Yes. Uh, energized, yeah, Re revigorated. And your skin looks smoother, younger. And you just feel good. You just feel like you have been bad or taken tonic, you know, elixir or something. That alone already feel good. And if you meditate, of course, you feel much better. I hope uh, everything is to your liking. Yeah? yeah. Anyhow, you see, we could live forever, really. Even in this physical body and in this physical life, uh, physical world, we could live forever. That's why when we read the old, the old story, uh, we heard that some people live until 800 years old, uh, 800 score of years, things like that. Yeah, and in Chinese they live, some of the punks who really live until four or five hundred years old. And uh, some people still do, in a remote uh, region of the world, where they don't have too much contamination, and no pollution in the air, and their life is simple, and their way of living is even, everyday, uneventful and stressful, and their demand is few, and their contentment is great. So, more or less, they live in a heavenly world, in the physical body, so they live longer. Some people still, still live in some remote area of, of Himalaya, if I could believe them. They live until four or five hundred years old. Not too many, but there are some. And even in some of uh, our countries, in the plain here, in ordinary places, some people live until 200 something years old. Sometimes you read newspapers. If you can't believe in a newspaper. <laughs> yeah, they do. There are some exceptional beings who live that long. My grandmother lived up to over 100 years old. My, my father's mother. Yes. 105 when she died, and she was still healthy. I mean, she was still strong when she when she passed away. When she was 100 years old, uh, they took a picture of her and gave it to me. And she wearing some beautiful clothes like llama dress, you know. <laughs> yes, and she looked so good. She smiled so brilliantly. I remember her life was very simple, and she had like 13 kids. Can you believe that? Yeah. In the old time, we have a matriarchal uh, system, just like the Zulu people now. Do you still have this system here? Traditional people do. Most people still traditional? No. They're modernized now. They become patriarchal. In the old time, we have that system everywhere. The women were in charge. They took care of the state affair, they decided great uh, events for the country or country. They made decisions in the house regarding all the big issues for the families and the children. And the husband just hang around, help. <laughs> help producing babies. <laughs> And then later on, sometime, long, long time later, many, many, oh, thousand years later, you have become wiser, and not really wiser, but <laughs> you have learned with your wife, with the clever woman, how to govern, how to concentrate on things at hand, and how to manage the stage affair. I don't mean to offend you, okay, guys? I'm just telling you history, because so... <laughs> Do you want to listen? Yeah. Really? Okay. I'm very aware of your male fragile ego. 
I'm just trying to give you a piece of information and purely objective <laughs> of what I know. Yes. In your time, we, if you read history, you will know what I say is true. Well, I don't know much about your culture or uh, European culture, but in my culture, in Vietnamese culture, in no time, the women were in charge. Yes. And I think some scatter here and there now in some countries still have that, like in, in Tibet, there some are still uh, remain this uh, matriarchal system. And in your country here, the, some of the Zulu tribes, traditional, still remain that. And this is this good song. If you study genetic system of men and women and uh, the way men and women behave and the way men and women take care of things, you understand why. Yeah? They, the women are more delicate, more okay, attentive to details and whatever they do, they do it more correctly, more, I would say, refinedly, more detailedly. Yes. That's why God has entrusted the biggest, noblest task of being a mother to women. It's very difficult, difficult job. If men have to bear a child for nine months, I don't know if they can, <laughs> <laughs> they can endure it. It's a very difficult job. And raising children. So in your time, we have this uh, different system of the women taking care of everything that is important to the physical comfort of the whole family and the state. And the men doing physical job, like helping the women with a heavy uh, task, yeah, doing anything that is requires muscle and uh, strength, yes. and men are capable of that, and there, there, therefore you can see men develop more and more always, genetically speaking, they're always stronger than women, weaker, yes, more muscular, and the women have always been more delicate, more refined, more attentive, more concentrated whenever they, they do things. And we even have a saying nowadays to admit it. Behind a great man, there is always a great woman. Yes, even now. Yes, even now. Long time ago, men and women were very content to live alongside each other and doing whatever, whatever naturally comes to them. For example, a woman is more delicate and more brainy, so they take care of some intellectual issue. And man is more muscular, strong, protective, so they do that. They work together fine, yeah, fine. And there were no problem at all, and the world was much in a much better shape. Not talk about physical comfort, only spiritually speaking and uh, emotionally speaking, the world has has been a, uh, has been at that time a better place to live. Yes. Because the woman rule with more common sense and love. A woman was a symbol of love. And they still are. That's why thousands of songs are written in the name of the mothers. And all the songs about wars and encouraging children are written for men. <laughs> men today is different, of course. I'm just saying that how things have changed during all this uh, historical time and have changed our world too. In the beginning, uh, everybody thought of God as a mother. Because it is very simple. Woman bears kids. Yeah? Give birth to children. So naturally, for us, all of us, to think that uh, our God is a mother. Yes. So it's okay also if he's a man who cares. But what I mean is, in your time, we automatically worship God as a mother goddess. All right. 
fine. And the man also accept that. Everybody say, Mother God. <laughs> and then, but, uh, you know, as usual, men sometimes are uh, jealous, ego. So they begin to wonder why women should rule everything in no time. That men are not getting paid or anything. Women take care of everything. And uh, the men just help out whatever required. Mostly in the heavy labor, yeah. And now some of the men, some of the men have not been so contented with that. Especially the men who were not so good looking and have no women who love them and who chase after them. Before a woman chase after men, yeah? She will be the one who propose and then she will marry him and give him all the things that he needs. Yeah, dowry, you know, jewels, whatever, you know, tools, showers, <laughs> so that so that he's happy. Yeah, and build houses for him, things like that. But some of the men begin to feel frustrated, you know, and so they want to rule. Yes, and they begin to inch their way into power by different means, and then finally they succeed. And ever since then, they have waged war against women, trying so hard to tell women that they are bad, they are inferior, and cannot do much. And it is a very nonsensical theory, but nevertheless, our society, our world, has become worsened spiritually, emotionally, morally, because of this belief because of discrimination, because of saying men are better than women, or even women are better than men. In the old time, of course, because men were physically fit, so they were assigned to do heavy labor, that's all right. And women are more delicate, they're more, uh, more for, for thinking, so they do the intellectual work, it's also fine. But then to say that man is better than woman is, is not true. Because even chemically, chemically speaking, we both have the same brain and the same stuff. But most of the time, women are more delicate. More, uh, they, they think deeper. They more in detail, have more comments. And that, that is normal. Yeah, because men develop different way, women develop different way. You see, God made it even like that. God gives, God gives men strength and muscle, and God gives women intellect, because they are weak already. So if they don't have intelligence and more intellectual power, they will be very, very disadvantaged. Yes? So man and woman combine strength like this would be a perfect match. It's not that anyone better than anyone. Just different job. Just like somebody is assigned to do work in the office, another is more strong and uh, more building talent is assigned, assigned to do outdoor work or building houses. For example, like that. Somebody has to do something. Okay. But because of... It's not because the main rule that makes the world work. It's just because they have tried so hard to put women down and not utilize the intelligence of the feminine aspect. And that's why the world has been short of a lot of things. Instead of looking down upon women or suppressing women, uh, our society should encourage, should make use of their talent, their intelligent powers, and their love, their limitless strength, of love from the woman in order to take care of this planet, then our world would have been much, much more a better place to live. Because women are more capable of enduring than men, enduring hardship, enduring difficult situation, and can think of solution better than many men. They are just born like that. And men are born more strong and protective, or giving, yes. Each one is different, that's all. And then we in turn can become men 
a woman again and again. It doesn't mean that, okay, this special race has been woman forever, and this special race remains forever. So there's no need to say, oh, woman better than man, man better than woman. Whenever you are born in a body of a man, you are like this. And whenever you are born into a body of a woman, then you become like that. So you will take turn to exercise the power of intellect or the power of the muscle. So actually, we are all us, <laughs> men or women. It's just the ego comes in between. The male's ego came in between. Now, as well as for all time, the man being so strong, protective, and muscular, feeling bad when a small woman tells him what to do. <laughs> feeling that he should be telling her what to do. But he could not. Because he couldn't do two things at once. He couldn't do many things at once. Somebody must organize. And somebody must carry, must carry out the order. That would be better like that only. Yeah? So the woman being uh, lack, uh, uh, lacking of physical strength, she would be more concentrated on the thinking process. Therefore, she came up with more uh, good ideas. Yeah. And men who are busy moving objects, yeah, building houses, uh, protecting the children, fighting with the bears <laughs> and the tigers, of course, they don't have time to think, yeah, so they do not develop much in that area. God to give men strength to do these kind of things, protecting jobs, building jobs, and women a week stay home, think, yeah, think of a plan what to do. And then ask the men to care. Men use the men power to carry it out. The body work perfectly. So now the men want to do the opposite. Want to do the thinking. So what, who who is the one who will carry the object then? Or who build the house then? Who fight the tiger then? Huh? You see you see how how ridiculous? Yeah. We make use of our weakness instead of strength. And now the male woman has to be fighting the tiger, protecting the children, <laughs> guarding the caves, <laughs> while the man uh, sits there through the thinking <laughs> and wasting his muscle. So the world became softy turvy. Things had not been done the way they should have been done. So you can imagine. Yeah? Slowly, slowly. Our world has become retarded. So you heard of the golden age, yeah? Golden age, that is when things have been done and carried out and obeyed the way God intended. But never mind, it's okay. Men can also have power, but they should not underestimate the strength of women's fineness and intelligence. Because Women are the greatest help to men, and men are the greatest help to women. Without one or another, we cannot live. I just hope that the world will change for the better, and we go back to the golden age again. Yes, we say like we look down upon some country as a, a how to say the third third world, the underdeveloped countries like Pakistan, Nicaragua for example, but they have women prime ministers already. And it's a Muslim country. I cannot believe it. A Muslim country. They elected women prime ministers. It's a wonder of all the wonder in this world. We should follow that example. Yes. Muslim countries, they normally treat women very strictly, you know, you have to cover yourself, you can't go anywhere without men, <laughs> and don't do this, don't do that. But the elected a woman prime minister, she's wonderful. Anyhow, it's not about competition with men and women. I'm telling you this in order for you to see that we should not change the way of God's intention. Then our life is heaven. Now, why is that since men ruled, things become different? It's not only the physical change of our world and planet. It is the, the, the intention 
it is the, the thinking process that has been changed as well. The mother goddess became a, a father god. The father is a stern father, you know, who punish, who make rules, and who give precepts and commandments, and who create hell, and, you know, men are more strict, yeah, more stern. They rule more than they, they teach, more than they encourage. A woman, more tolerant, more teaching, more encouraging. Yes, like if a children do something wrong, the woman tends to have more patience, take more time again, again, and again. Tell the child what is wrong and never give up on him or her. And men usually do not have uh, this equipment of patience. It is the way God made us. It's not your fault. It's not anybody's fault. God makes men and women different for different jobs. It's just that we do it opposite way. You know, we make use of our weakness now instead of strength. Woman weakness is muscle. Man weakness is intellect and patience. And women try to use the muscle now to go out and work <laughs> yeah, and compete with men. So our world, of course, cannot be the way it should be, you know. Anyhow, it's not only that, it's the thinking that changes everything. Because, as we know already, what we think, we will get, sooner or later. Because everything else, and nothing, everything is created by the thinking only, because we are God. God worked it, so it will be. Yeah? The thing, therefore, is manifest. This is stated so in every Bible. Now the thinking process has been changed dramatically and they have tried to change gradually over hundreds or thousands of years and because of this thinking, this detrimental thinking, that our world has degraded from the golden age to the state that we are experiencing now. The thinking is very important. The thought is very important. When we think, for example, that God is a mother, for example, that automatically gives us the impression that God is tolerant, God is forever loving, like the way the mother are. Yes. And father is always strict. Yes. Very, very strict to children. Don't you think so? Still are, no? Yes, just the way we are like that, yes. That's why more children are more close to mother than to father. It's just the way we are. And then when we return, reincarnate as a woman, then we are different. So, so no, nobody is really always perfect or always woman. So there's no need for jealousy here. But human beings did not know that. And they still don't know that. So everyone tries to grab power. And since then, we have not changed this system. We don't have to change, maybe we don't have to, but we should include women alongside and have respect of her wisdom and make use of her strength of intelligence. It would be better for us. It's not that women should be better than men or rule over men, it's not that. But women have a limitless strength of power and a limitless endurance, stamina. That's why they can bear and raise children. And they can endure a lot of things for the family. And that's why mother has been loved, respected, and praised since time in memory. These things we can afford upon the children to do. They just do it because they know the mother are good. So now, even if the father brings money home, the children still love the mother more and respect the mother more. Uh, it's not fair, is it? <laughs> Too bad. Who told you guys to go out and bring money home? You should stay home. <laughs> you should do what the woman wants, just, you know, instead of going out and ruling, just be a partner. It would be better. Anyhow, so since, since the change of the system, political, political system, we always believe more in, uh, in a male God. 
and since then we regret because we have lost the belief in an eternally loving God. And what we believe, we get. See? We believe in a punishing God. We believe in hell after, after life. We believe in a sin. And, and we believe in intolerant God. It has not been like that before. God has made us human. God has uh, let us ascend into this world to do whatever we do to, to learn. To learn to become God again. To learn to appreciate God again. Because in this physical world, in this physical body, we become powerless. We are already very helpless. We already suffer enough. So there should not be no more punishment. No more killing of each other. No more abusing of each other, mental and emotional aspect anymore. Nothing worse than already being in the physical body and struggle for survival. But since we change the system, we change the belief as well, and we use fear to control each other. I mean, those who are in power, those who are negative and bad and frustrated ones, they use fear, they create a fear for God, fear some God, so to, to, to control other people, including men too. Because they cannot say, God only punish women. So, <laughs> so they just have to say, okay, God punish if you are bad, this and that and others. So men also believe in that. So we have lost the power of positive thinking. We have lost the power of believing in a forever loving, unconditional God, which he is or she is. And because we think God is fearsome, that God has, has held hell for, hell for us, God punish us and all that. So, so it becomes our life. Because of our fear, everything we do, and it's supposed to be wrong, or somebody told us that it's wrong, we have fear, we have guilt, and then we worry. We think, okay, I'm going to be punished. I'm going to hell. I'm going to have this and that. And that's how we will have it. And that's how we did have all this time. And the more fear, the more people fear, the more all of this negative thinking uh, congregate together, the, the more, the bigger the devil becomes. And he, he has more power, even though he didn't exist at all in the beginning. And everybody can have a devil now. <laughs> Alongside with God. Yeah, it was a necessary figure to have the physical power in this planet. So you see, that's how we have lost heaven. That's how it has been so difficult to go back to paradise again. Because of, of the free will has been abused. So if we complain about the uh, terrible condition of our planet today, we should know why. There's no God who didn't create it. He gave us a free will, and then some of us abuse it, and change it around, and make the whole planet think negatively, and forget God completely. Anytime we believe that there is a devil, that is the time we forsake God. Every time we believe that we are guilty, we're going to be punished. At that time, we have forsaken God. Any time we think that anything God has created is dirty, filthy, including sex, excuse me, at that time we forsake God. Understand? I don't mean sex in the sense of abusive, but I mean in the way that two people love each other. Yeah? But you have been taught that even that is bad. Just so for control. Because it's the most powerful experience of humankind. So they make it that so they can control people. Anyhow, to make this world into a paradise again is not an easy task. But at least now we know what's wrong. Between us, among us, we can change that. The women should look upon themselves as goddesses as the guidance of the family. The, the man should look upon himself 
as a protector of the weak loved one and not feeling fear about his inability to think in minute detail the way women do. And the woman should not be made to fear men because of his muscular strength, but to love him, also to protect him with her love, to protect his emotion, to protect his feeling, to love him, to make him feel a man that he is. And we are both a human being, we're both, and we're both wise in different ways, and we should work alongside each other instead of compete with each other for supremacy, like some of the family do. Suppose, okay, suppose uh, we don't believe that woman is endowed with more intellectual power and intelligence to manage things. Suppose we don't believe that. Okay. Now, we should believe at least that man and woman are equal. Equally created. There's only a little difference. <laughs> Not much, is it? <laughs> and nowadays we can change that too. <laughs> we can go to surgery and make a man out of a woman, make a woman out of men. So I don't know why <laughs> all this uh, discrimination about jobs and things like that. In many countries nowadays, women are still paying, get paid less than men. It should not be like that. And everywhere women are kind of uh, looked out upon. And that's why our world is not as good as it should be. Uh, because of the thinking. Yeah? So at least between us, I hope <laughs> that we remember from today that God is all merciful, be it male or female. I don't care. There is no such thing as vengeful God as a jealous God because if a God is like that we don't need to worship him aren't we like that ourselves already <laughs> do you need to worship another jealous human being no right yes. anyhow because of the thinking we affect the whole planet so even our group is very small compared to the population of this world but our thoughts are not small. Together, we can make a difference if our thinking are concentrated in the same direction. And this so-called concentration of thought power can help defeat the other concentration group of negative power. And then we can better the world. So that's the purpose also of us being here <laughs> uh, in the retreat because we could change the future, yeah? The present doesn't matter how bad or we could change because we have the free will to change the future. See what I mean? Yes, we could change. Destiny is only for the present, okay? Present. And still we can also maneuver it to make it differently to make it appear only in dreams, to make it appear only in illusion. This is the magic of God, not the black magic. Magic, magic is because of changing the illusion, not to make another illusion object out of thin air or anything like that. We're changing the existing illusion to make it different. We have this power to do that by just thinking it up, by just knowing that it will be so. To some of us, it's easy. To some of us, it's still very difficult. Well, we can do it. Okay, well, I'll tell you another thing next time. <laughs> Don't be jealous. Don't worry about it. <laughs>
go within the kingdom of God, within ourselves, we could experience a lot more about God. He manifests in many different ways. And how, he, how, how, do you, how do you bring people to that revelation, to that understanding? Uh, I do not have to bring people to that state because we all have kingdom of God within ourselves. It says so in the Bible. And so the moment we calm our mind in a special way, there is some, some way to calm the mind quicker than other way. And in our way, uh, it's the quickest way you could calm the mind and remember the kingdom of God. So it happens like almost immediately. How do you do that? Okay, it is not I that do this. It is the Father that uses this physical instrument. And when anyone is ready and wants to come to him again, then he will just do that. He will connect himself to himself within us. You make it sound very easy. Yes, it is absolutely easy, madam. Because there are so many people who struggle with faith. I know that, because they don't know the, the easiest way. <laughs> we can find struggle for thousands of years and don't see God. But if we know it, then it's second, 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 fraction of second. You talk about the Bible, but you, 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 you say, or, or, you know, the, the background I've read about you says, in fact, you're not a Christian, you're not a Buddhist, whatever. But you quote the Bible. Well, I am the believer of all religions because I have found that the essence of all the religious scriptures pointing toward one thing, that is, we have one God, and we sometimes we don't even need the Bible to know this because there must be a creator for all the beautiful things that we see with our naked eyes. But there are more and more beautiful things which we could see with our spiritual eye. For example, again. For example, we can ascend to heaven and see that the scenery there, the life, the beings there are thousandfold more beautiful. And how more do we know? Who's uh, been there and come back and reported? Well, we there uh, any time. I mean, the one who practiced this way of heaven. There is a way to go back there. That is the way we came from. If we came from heaven, we must be able to go back there, no? But how do we know we came from heaven? Well, we can prove that to ourselves by going back there and look. Well, where else should we come from? <laughs> Suppose we don't come from heaven, where else should we come from? Should we come from hell? We are the children of God. Jesus told us that. Buddha told us that. Mohammed told us that. And we can even prove that to ourselves. If God created us, we are the children of God. We must come from heaven. There are a lot of people who don't believe in God and who don't believe that God created us. Right. Well, I don't argue with these people. Sooner or later, they have to believe. And maybe they believe in their heart but they do not want to admit it. You know, sometimes it's fashionable to be different. It's okay. <laughs> so, so now you're going to be talking, you're going to be giving workshops. Uh, what, what, what sort of thing will you be doing at the workshop? Introduce to people the sure way to heaven, and if people are interested and they're ready to um, know their origin, to know our Father, or mother, <laughs> then uh, I will show them in a practical way. Like we would sit out to let the God within us connect each other again. You initiate sincere spiritual aspirants into the Kuan Yin method of meditation. Right. This event has been described as opening of the wisdom eye yes. and sudden or immediate enlightenment by yes. the great masters of old. Will you, will you talk us through this Kuan Yin method of meditation? Right. Okay. Kuan Yin is just a Chinese term for word or vibration or heavenly uh, sound or melody. In our worldly language, it is very difficult to unify uh, the meaning of the same thing. So in I would refer to the Bible. It is stated that the word of God. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And everything that was made was made by the Word. And nothing is made that is not made by this. So in order to find our origin, we have to re return back to where we came from. We have to trace back the Word that was with God, and that was even God. And that's how we are made of in and also everything else in this uh, universe is made of this essence of the tremendous energy of the universe, which we could call God Almighty. He, when manifest in this world, He has dwelt within us as human beings, and that manifest materially as the human beings, so we can see each other, or He manifests us in the flowers and the fruit we eat, the fruit that we like, etc. These are the material aspect of God. We retrace the word of God to go back to be united with Him. Kuan Yin is just a Chinese name because, you see, this is how we argue again, because the word is Kuan Yin. Kuan Yin means contemplate on this word of God, on this vibration of the universal power which make all beings. But then I started in Taiwan, and this word is Chinese, and they just keep using it as a habit. Yes. Sharon wants to know about death yes. uh, and after death. Yes. And she was suggesting that she had heard that if you're a Hindu, you're going to go to <laughs> heaven and meet Hindu yes. saints and gods and goddesses. Yes. If you're um, Christian, you mean Christian, Christ, you're Christ, 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 whatever. Yes. So it's very... Uh, culture oriented, uh -huh. culture focused. Right. And she wanted to know your views on yes. after death. Okay. Uh, in short, um, is this correct what she had heard uh, partially? Um, you see, the Most High manifests in different ways. He could also manifest as Chris or Buddha. In case that person, the person who dies does not know another religion outside his own. And it's also fine because it's all God manifestation anyhow. But, for example, in our group, uh, sometimes we meditate uh, in the way that we die daily. We die, we leave the physical body for a while and come back. And even uh, if our medi our the person who meditates, even if he's a Christian, sometimes you see the Buddha in his vision and learn with him. Or sometimes the Buddhist would have the honor to meet Christ so that he can know that God is one. But in the case of the people who die, uh, of course, because he's used to with Christ or used to with Buddha, so God doesn't want to confuse him. Of course, if he, he wants to greet him to heaven, then he will send uh, whoever the representative or the master that that person believes in for, for the first, for the beginning. <laughs> and later he will learn to know that all masters are sons of God, and they talk the same thing, and they teach human beings to remember uh, the greatest one. What I still wanted to know uh, was, are there other masters who are preaching either the same message or maybe a different message yes. in other places of the world? Right. Are there, right? Yes. There are, yes. There are quite a few, yes. And there are many more in different levels of consciousness and many different levels of understanding about God, but they all try their best to bring humankind's consciousness into a higher level to make our planet a more beautiful place and a safer place. This, I, 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 I would, I'm not still clear in my mind about this concept of master mm -hmm. of, and supreme master. Where does the title come from? Oh, God bestow. So you have decided that God bestowed on you the title of Supreme Master? I have not decided. He told me. So he has told you he that, that you are a Supreme Master? No, 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 no. No, so that people know that it's he who speaks. It's not a human being who speaks. It's not me, but not I, the physical being that speaks. It is the Master that speaks. So you say to your followers, this is not me speaking, this is the voice of God. Right. No, the teaching, the one that connects them to heaven again, that is God's power. That's from Him. I see. No human being can do that. Now, I'd, I'd also like you, um, Supreme Master Ching Hai, to clear up a couple of 
things in my own mind. Yes. Design jewellery and yes. sell jewellery. Right. I, I find that at odds with being such a spiritually enlightened person. Oh, not really. I use the money to travel, to uh, to buy airplane tickets, all that, to, uh, to work for God. And uh, the rest I give to the charity people. So for the poor people, so it's nothing unspiritual about that. <laughs> it just seems I need to I need to have money to go around to yes. to talk to people and to go on airplane to go by taxi. So I cannot take donation because God has told me I can only give. I cannot take. And and to get back to your number one, refrain from taking the life of sentient beings. Right. There's there's a little rider to this that says the keeping of this precept requires a vegan or lacto-vegetarian diet. Yes. So you do insist, can you not see God if you're not a vegetarian? No, you can't. You can see God the same. It's just that if we want to go higher, into the higher we go, the less baggage you should carry. And animals, energies, do tend to uh, drag us a little into a lower kind of energy. So we would better refrain from it if we want our the soul to be less burdened. Yes. And yes, that's all. But even without vegetarian diet, we could see God immediately. So the people who came to me the first night or the first day, they are not being vegetarian. But they also can see God immediately. I have to let them see so that they can believe. And then, of course, they, when they believe God and when God enters their soul again, they'll be purified and they'll be glad and willingly to be vegetarian also. From then on. Um, uh, Supreme Master Ching Hai, people listening, what sort of message would you have for somebody who is listening? Yeah, just remember God, and even though you don't see Him, He is forever merciful. He is not a vengeful God, He is not a jealous God. He is forever loving. She is forever loving, forgiving. So at the time you die, you must remember this that God is is the only one and God is forever loving you just remember this so that you can go direct to heaven do not believe in hell do not believe in punishments from God because God loves you always no matter who and what you are because you are him just one last question what does a person see when they see God well he can see many aspects of God because God is infinite so, for example, one aspect is the light, and another aspect is the way he speaks to you. He imparts wisdom to you. And the voice sounds like thunder, the voice sounds like the ocean, voice like melody, voice that soothes your soul and calms your nerves and open your wisdom and, and, and dear you to him again and make you become a saint, make you become heavenly being again that where you came from. But you can also see Jesus or Buddha, his representative, also the past masters, and talk to them and learn from them. And, and you're going to be speaking at the Parliament of World Religion? Right, ma'am. Okay, because um, we're going to be talking to Africa Msumang, who we've had on the uh, program before, and Claudius van Veek, who's the organizer right. uh, and the PRO very shortly. Well, thank you very much for uh, being with us this evening. Thank you, Kate. Uh,